so we'll get started. My name is William Sinka. I'm the president of the Historical Society for the Winter's Regiment. We're going to do a demonstration firing a third pattern musket, which was used during the War of 1812 in Canada. Uh, the musket is a smooth bore barrel. It fires a 75 caliber or 0.75 caliber ball out of a 0.69, point, sorry, uh, 0.69 ball out of a 0.75 caliber barrel. Uh, we're going to fire one shot by commands and one or two shots. The person will just fire as quickly as possible. Anybody have any quick questions that they'd like to know? Actually, going to fire a ball out of the No, <laughs> no. Okay. But just as an example. <laughs> yeah, we're going to try and take out the. Uh, we're going to go try and take out the wagon over there. No. <laughs> it fires, but we are not firing. Did I say we are firing? I meant to say it's normally fired. I'm not used to doing this. COVID, we shut down for a couple of years. Okay. You're my first audience in two years. So, bear with me. so anybody have any other questions? That was an excellent question. I can see people, especially the runners here, cringing. Do you have one, sir? The, the hundreds, they were in the War of 1812, Lundy's Lane, all that. Not Lundy's Lane. Um, Fort Niagara, yeah. Chippewa, a number of other little uh, battles here and there that will remain nameless at the moment, but we can talk about it. Uh, at the same time during the war, they were at uh, Ilo Noir in Quebec. Uh, they captured two bateaux that came down, came up from the U.S. At the same time, they had uh, units up here or up in Upper Canada. Uh, so they did participate in a number of battles. Um, the main ones are, Ni are Fort Niagara, the capture of uh, Chippewa, and uh, Ilo Noir, where they captured the bateau. But there were some skirmishes that happened. They also participated in the raid on Black Rock, which happened during the winter. Um, yes? Did they, is it the War of 1812 where they burned down the White House? The British Army burned down the White House. Canadians didn't. I don't know if there were any Canadians participating, but we did have Canadians in this British Army regiment. Uh, they signed up in, in Quebec. Uh, we even had, we had uh, one, person who was born in New York City, is black, came up here, signed up in Montreal. We had one person from Ilo Bois. I can never pronounce the name properly, but it's uh, an island just east of Africa. He somehow ended up in Dublin, and he signed up there. And then we had a gentleman from India, the, the exact town escapes me. He ended up, I forget where, in Ireland. Probably he worked on a boat or something and he joined the regiment from there. But he was from India, Pakistan. I don't know exactly where it is geographically today. Yeah. He was there. So there was actually people from a number of different regiments or different uh, backgrounds in the regiment. We also, predominantly this regiment was Irish, 91%. That's, that was my question. Where is this regiment originally raised? Uh, it was raised in Ireland, both in Dublin. It's known as the County of Dublin Regiment in this period. All regiments have counties attached to their name. Mm -hmm. so it was originally the 100th County of Dublin Regiment, and then it was given His Royal Highness the Prince Regent's County of Dublin Regiment. So they could be known as 100th Regiment, County of Dublin Regiment, or His Royal Highness the Prince Regent's Regiment. And nobody often uses the whole term. The only other little bit to know if any of you come from Richmond or the west end of um, Ottawa. The reason we do this here in Ottawa is because in 1818, the regiment was disbanded. At that point, it was called the 99th because they took the 95th Regiment out of the line to turn it into the Rifle Regiment. And so all the regiments moved down one. So this regiment moved to 199th. So you often see 99th in brackets, late 100th Regiment. Uh, they settled Richmond. If you ever cut, uh, drove on the Richmond Road, they cut the Richmond Road. They originally landed in, in the late summer of 1818 near where the War Museum is. It used to be called Bellows Landing. You'll know it now as Richmond Landing, simply because the regiment arrived there. There was several hundred of them. They decided that this will now be Richmond Landing. And that's where the Richmond Road comes from, and that's where Richmond comes from. And the reason they chose Richmond, in case you don't know, the Duke of Richmond was arriving at the same time they were leaving Quebec City to come here. So they decided to call their new settlement Richmond. I won't get into the fact that the Duke of Richmond visited and died the same day as from rabies. Any other questions before we get going? Fifteen seconds is the aim. Uh, Twenty seconds, if you're really, really practiced. If you've watched Sharp, forget that. That's not what Sharp says. Um, often, though, because we don't practice at such a high standard, 20, 30 yeah, seconds. Say again? Three times a minute, it's flying. Yeah, that's it. So, 
figure about 20 seconds. Today, uh, the private hasn't practiced in a little while, so bear with us, but likely he's going to be around the 20 second mark. Okay. Last no question. Pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Last question before we get going. No? Okay. There we go. Private Newton will perform the platoon loading exercise with flank cartridge. Float! Fire is going to count three seconds, then he's going to check his priming, uh, he's going to check his flint. If that doesn't work, then he's got to go to his other uh, misfire option. ammo pouch? Um, really good question. There's 60. There are, um, it's been a while, I think it's 40 ready rounds on the top and uh, 20 ready rounds on the bottom. I'll have to get back to you. It's been a little while okay. since I, I looked that up. But the pouch is definitely 60 rounds. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's 40 along the top and four, pa four packs of 10. And under underneath there's a tray, uh, tray yeah. for the rest. while we're waiting. <laughs> now you know why they switched from flint locks in 1838 to cap. It was much more reliable. Mm -hmm. And it's not even humid today. Yeah, so, they're kidding. It's perfect weather for this. Yeah, flints could last up to 40 or 60 shots. They would normally carry about two flints with them, uh, sometimes three. Uh, however, in this case, one flint seems not to uh, be worth as well. They still make, make flint locks. Yeah, these are reproductions. Oh, we got a flash in the pan. So a flash in the pan is a little different. Uh, what happens is where he puts the priming powder where the where the flint's going to strike, that went off, but the barrel main charge did not. Oh. So it's a slightly different action he's got to take to clear that. He'll reprime the pan, and then he'll proceed. I've got to go get set up. Uh, for those that are interested in 15 minutes, I'm giving my talk on Canada and the Civil War. In 15 Almost. Okay. That charge ain't going, man. <laughs> the thing about that is not a So, 
Folks, I uh, must regret to say that having these malfunctions with this piece tells me we're probably not going to be uh, able to fix it in time to show a, a successful flyer. So uh, th we want to thank you very much for coming and watching, but as it stands, I'm going to have to take some time, do some troubleshooting, find out what's really going on. So my apologies. No, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. There we go. All right. We are off. This was a wonderful time. I hope you guys, well, I know this was a long one, but hey, welcome to the way it goes. Okay, see you.